All right, and here we are. Final chapter in the Book of Hours. This will be my last play session. Uh, last time I played, I got bored with crafting and kind of just ended it, and then took a walk through the wiki to see all the things I missed. The good news there is not much. A couple secrets here, a couple interactions there, but by and large, I found most everything. And don't really feel the need to rub it in, those things I did not uncover. So, the only thing I'm going to be doing this play session is rounding things out, writing my history, um, ending the game, and then uh, giving my final thoughts. It shouldn't be terribly long. So, let's get going. I have a gold splintria, which I will use to call Numa. I need to write my history now. Do I have? What's the ink situation? We don't have Porphyrine, which we need to call uh, Numa. And where is my notes? My notes, my notes, my notes. And I decided that the Gods from Steel and the Archaeologist branded version of that is exactly what I want. What was that sound? It's the... It's the sounds that come and go makes me so very paranoid. Anyway, uh, I need some Porphyrine, and I need to summon up uh, 25 Forge, so I need Orpiment Exultant. And I need Merciless Alteration, so let's go do that. Orpiment Exultant. is Iotic's Essence and a ton of Forge. And I have Iotic Essence right there. And do I just have enough Forge just on me? Just as part of me? Yeah, look at that. Absolutely huge. I am enormous. Okay, and we're gonna need some Porphyrine. We need Icar Aurora. Mm, Icar Aurora. Icar Vitreous. Icar Aurora. Icar Vitreous. Icar Aurora. There we go. And I need a ton of lantern. I also need Merciless Alteration, which is the Newman of Victory. Right here. Let me read it for the last time in Hyksos, as per tradition. And now we need... we have enough lantern. We have enough everything, right? Yeah. We just let time go. And almost there. There is the Newman. There is the Overment Exultant. Alright, right there. And now we need Faust, and we need this. Huh. Must not be the right skill. Inks of something, right? Inks of power, maybe? Strange how inks don't go there. Oh, do I even know how to make this? Horphorine. I didn't write down what card it is. Maker Whirl, 15 Lantern, Porphyrine. <laughs> let's hope that's enough. So, let's start looking and see if I can find the correct card for this. Rural Contemplations. Ah, there we are. Porphyrine. And this should give me everything I need now to write my history. So we go to a forge desk right there. Go and we get my journal right there. Um, 
Unfortunately, my metal is still fatigued. Maybe I could do it with a little less metal. And that, and then that. Oh yeah, we don't need <laughs> our best metal. Our second best metal could do it. Gods from steel will bring a second dawn. Should not be possible to birth new hours from glory in the world, but there is always a way. And if I am destroyed in the birth of those new hours, that is the final expiation. There we go. History in progress. What would gods from steel even be? I feel there needs to be a god over uh, the impersonal nature of modern manufacturing when we make machines greater than our bodies. Like the Forge of Days and the Flint are all about shaping tools, but there should be a god that represents what happens when the tools become greater than us, and we are but tools to it, like individual workers on an assembly line, all building something. Individually, they all know what they're doing, but collectively, no one sees the entire whole. There should definitely be a god for that feeling. I'm not sure if there should be a god for, like, internet and computing thing. Like, Ghost in the Machine is kind of... I can't work up a proper feeling about that, you know? There we go. It is written. I have recorded a new history. Bring it to Earl Bryan's field in the season of Numa. And the, uh, the hours will bear witness. What have I done? What have I done? Do I have a... My history. I have recorded a history in which the gods from steel bring a second dawn through the Newman merciless alteration. So I got a history, and it's a my history. All right, good. Anyway, where is my poor Ferrine? We have to pen a note to our favorite hour, the, uh, we will do this in human skin. <laughs> our favorite hour, the Vagabond. Um, how does one do that? Um, how do I... Re do a request for Numa. I did this before, yes? Yes, I did do this before. I did this several times. You have to write it in Porphyrine. I remember that. Oh, there we go. You can't write on human skin. It must just be on paper. Very sad. With the proper arts and signs, and the proper in custom, a librarian of the house might find a way to attract the direct attention of an hour. The beach crow has no dominion over Numa. No hour does. But he knows it better than some. Perhaps he will find the season. There we go. Please do the thing. Then it's just a matter of waiting, yes? And then we will end this game... I will blather a bit, and I'll proceed to play something else. Petition for a Labyrinth Season. If this ever reaches its destination, it might bring Numa. Here you go. <laughs> oh, wait. A bird marked seal by the courier of the lower size. Huh, it only takes tallies. There we go. I probably should have read that. And now we wait. We wait for Numa. Ah, an auction. For a thing I no longer care about. I no longer care about education or reading. I care about history. Here in the season of secrets, when the tree blooms white, 
I shall make a new way for the world to be. Um, so maybe I can just start talking now, I guess. Given that I am just waiting. So, obviously I've enjoyed this game quite a bit. I enjoy exploration, I enjoy puzzles, I enjoy figuring out mechanics. So this game is... I, I, I very much enjoy the idea of, of secret histories and occult themes. So this game is more or less made entirely for me. And that's good. I've enjoyed it. Um, as I've stated before, I think the biggest thing to say about Book of Hours is I find it remarkable how the way you play the game mirrors the themes of the game. The theme of the game is you are picking your way bit by bit into an esoteric, arcane, unknowable world. And the librarian within the game is slowly learning more about how the, the, how the world works, how uh, the great powers of the world work and interact with each other, the, how the arcane world touches the real world and the rules that govern all that. And that's what the librarian is doing. And while you're doing that, the player is trying to figure out how the game works. Like, how do you unlock rooms? How do you combine soul cards? What do these skills do? Where do you get these memories? How do they all interact? How do I read a book? How do I read a book? And so the the what is happening in the game and what is happening to the player are almost identical, which is... Um, not something you get in a lot of games that I've noticed, at least. Like when you're playing Doom or something, you're playing Jupiter Hell, you, you, you're, you're, you're out there blasting demons, but the, what the player is doing doesn't have a lot to do with what the, the mechanics of shooting guns and running around and getting shot with fireballs in the face. Um, I really enjoy how all feels one in this game. It's very unified in theme. Um, I would love to play it again, but I feel like the the replayability just isn't there. Uh, I am disappointed that the house is not randomized from run to run, so that might be quite a lot to ask, especially narratively. Um, but it does really damage the replayability. I read on the wiki that there's over a hundred endings to this game, but my, my only question is why? Why would anyone play this game a dozen times, let alone a hundred? Is Numa, Numa gonna come? When shall Numa come? Anyway, um, I know the books are randomized, but that appears to be it, and that's just not enough. Um, the the incident system with people coming to the library and needing consultations, I really like that. I like the idea that you are here to perform a service, and this is a service. And you have um, leeway in how you perform it. I don't like how shallow the system is, though. Um, like, when I gave the one of the, the visitors the cursed book, nothing happened. At very least, something should happen when I give them a book that bites them. Uh, but the system is just doesn't have that depth to it. It feels like you should be making real choices with how you help and if you help the people that come to the house. But, ah, uh, it's here. It is Numa. Oh, the trees bloom strange as Numa washes over the land. Oh. <laughs> the matter of the feasting few. Ah, well, I'm glad Rowena showed up. I wanted to see if I could give her my journal. Oh. She doesn't really care. So what is this about? If I were here, perhaps it was the twins that brought me. Is the twins that unite that which must not be apart, and so I share their patronage with my sisters in blood. As Bancroft used to say, there are appetites other than love. Um, so this is just a random grail sort of thing. If I were here, 
I would acknowledge my crimes. I would ask you to set them before me and something to remind me why I'd chosen to commit them. I wonder if I could ever get my journal up to a enough uh, aspect to make it worthwhile. But no, Rowena doesn't really seem... It's very strange for her being the patroness of the house. You can only put in things here that are readable. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I really like the system of realizing which boxes aren't like others and having to pay a lot of attention to that. I get a feeling that not many people really enjoy that sort of interaction, but I do like the idea that the fine details have always been right under your nose. See, like, look at this. I'm trying to give her a book that is too weak for her. No, wait. That's not the right one. There we go. Oh. She can't read Latin? How could you be an ancient Legion and not read Latin? See, this is... I'm trying to give her a grail book that is insufficient for her needs, and she doesn't have any special comment on it. Blood is significant, choices infinitely more so. My descendant child has her own choices to make. If I were here, I'd ask you to give her my counsel, but I cannot be here. So, the problem is it's just so shallow. I wish more was done with that. Um, I need not to have Rowena in my inventory. Rowena, go back on your shelf. Alright, she gave me a silver. Beautiful. And it is time to bring a close to the game. Off to Earl Brian's tree, with full flower of Calyptra. I like being able to know the lore. I enjoy reading about lore. I enjoy uncovering lore. And this game is all about secret lore. So it's really hard for me not to like this. And I will put in my massive shaft. Earth, sky, sea, bear witness to my work. You wrought a history which at least one of the hours will endorse. At this point, this is the point of no return. Many of these histories are strange or wild. Unless you're certain you want to end the game, remain here in the peace of the house. No, nope, we are ending this game. Tick-tock. I unlocked the judgment card. Nice. Judgment. Ah, uh, that looks unpleasant. That guy's flayed. They're off. Then we're seeing this, this these ladies' bones as the sun mercilessly pounds down on everyone. Ah, uh, not not a fan of what's going on here. Would prefer to avoid. Two out of ten. Uh, would not endorse. Anyway, architect victory, born among colors. Uh, archaeologist victory, excuse me. It should not be possible. Oh, I've already read this. The new king's foundries and glassworks roar with light. It's autumn, but already the knights are in retreat. Across the kingdom, they're setting up altars of glass and steel. Dawn will kindle in the altar depths, and I will open my arms to its colors. My shadow will leave me, and then at last will I know which me I am. I have proved himself as a librarian, convinced the hours to accept a history, changed the world, won the game. This is the memory that does not die. Please accept our congratulations. How wonderful. Here we go. Huh. I got 21 on the first one, and then 20 on this one. Interesting. Well, anyway, to continue my thoughts, um, like I said, primarily positive on the game. Wish wish there was more. Wish I could play it myself again. Just like I kind of wish I could lobotomize myself so I could play Cultus Simulator again, fresh. And play this game again, fresh. Because the you can never discover something more than once, which is the real 
tragedy of existence, I guess. But uh, things to be improved. Um, greater randomization is definitely something I should look into. Like I said uh, many, many chapters ago, I would love a Serapium themed um, expansion where rooms come and go all the time and you only have exposure to workbenches some of the time and you have people coming and going some of the time and there's always something to explore. You don't close out the house as you do here in Brancrug. The Serapium being everywhere and nowhere, as I have interpreted, um, it, you constantly have access to different things. And so the, the, the library is a constant character you have to deal with instead of just something that become it's terminal after a while. I think there's a lot of possibilities with that. I'm not sure if this engine will be able to support it as it seems very static, but uh, here's hoping that they can make it work. Um, I spoke about the incidents being great flavor, but they'd seem to go nowhere. There seems to be no point. It seems to just be person shows up, they say something that doesn't you don't doesn't matter and doesn't you don't understand, and it's ultimately inconsequential. And you can give them the right book and the wrong book. Uh, and there's the, just you give them the wrong book, you just lose money. You give them the right book, you just give money. There's no greater choice. Like, you should be able to be able to, to guide events by sabotaging people, by giving them trapped books, um, encouraging people by giving them books of great mystery instead of books of little mystery, um, or, and just ignoring certain people in order to affect events that way. Um, so that system needs to be fleshed out, and I think that should be fairly straightforward to do. Um... So that's something to look forward to in expansions. I think it's criminal that the dog doesn't walk around. I think it's criminal that the pets don't move from room to room. I think it's criminal that there doesn't appear to be any hidden pixels anywhere. Like, I would... Ex Maybe I just missed them. I don't understand. But why aren't I, I clicking on every single pixel of the map to see, like, a hidden cabinet pop open? Or, like, a hidden item fall out. Like, they're just static images, the, the, the each individual rooms, that's made for a hidden item sort of sub-game. And it's just... I don't understand at all why they didn't go that route. It would have been such a natural fit with the themes of the game and how it goes. And The game is made for people that delight in finding secrets. And that's a secret that is really easy to fit into the format of the game that they have going here. I... I think that's absolutely a must that they should do um, in an expansion, but I don't understand why it wasn't in release. It just seems so obvious to me. Um, moving on, what else, what else, what else? I didn't like how Brankrug became useless after a while. Um, I really liked hiring people to do work for me. I liked interacting with the town, but the town just seemed to u lose utility after a certain point. Um, I don't like any of the gather quests, like um, walking on the moors, or the beach, or the sea caves. None of them seem to do anything worthwhile. Um, more should be coming out of that. Um, though it's hard to say exactly what. They would have to be like opportunities, or plot, or something like that. I still didn't find a cat. That's weird. No cat is very weird. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, having visitors be like Sims sitting in the many chairs of the house, wandering around, is probably more animation that they ever wanted to do, but it would be excellent flavor. Like, the entire house having, like, being what? over a hundred rooms and somehow the librarian is the only person in it is unsatisfying. Uh, I think it would be great depth to the game to have to hire servants and have them be puttering around um, and introduce quest lines and mechanics. Like people from Brand Krug could just straight up move into the library. Like Miss Killy, you're you're now working here. And we could see her doing stuff in between recruiting her and just dosing her with 
enormous quantities of alcohol so that she can open up a certain room. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a fine idea. Um, but yeah, over a hundred endings. Yeah, the game does not have the replayability in it for over a hundred endings. It has to be just stuff for swapping stories online and showing people what you found and so forth. I don't know. Um, so overall, fairly excellent game. Um, like I said, really enjoy it. I feel like the game is made explicitly for me. I wish I could lobotomize myself so I could do it again. Um, uh, if they come out with another game, I will buy it sight unseen. No problem. Um, obviously, this is kind of a niche game. I don't see it as having huge wide appeal, but the people that do like it are going to be like me and they're going to be fanatics. <laughs> so there, there's one thing for for choosing this market segment over others. You know, you, you lose the, 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 the horde trait, but you get the fanatical fan base trait that will drop little references into conversation trying to identify others out in the wild. I imagine it. Oh, I would totally, 100%, go to like Cult Con, like Weather Factory Con. I would 100% go. There's going to be the greatest people there. I guarantee it. Um. Yeah, we'll see if they do that. Keep an eye on it. I will. I will 100% buy a t plane ticket and fly to Cornwall for it. No problem. I will definitely, definitely do it. Um. Other things. I think that might be it. Like, the core game is excellent. It needs depth in some of its mechanics. Some things seem inexplicably overlooked when it comes to design. Maybe they just didn't have time. Um, really enjoyed the writing, really enjoyed the books, really enjoyed putting together the lore. Not sure I enjoyed the extra influences. Like, Nectar, Sky, Moon, and Scale, and Rose. I don't think those really added terribly much. Oh, I didn't talk about the big thing. Yeah, the UI needs a lot of work. I spent a lot of time trying to find to to put everything on screen because of the the um, all of the um, the UI panels are just too big and. I tried. I really tried to have the skill cards be uh, one half stacked or one four stacked. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Uh, skill cards need a lot of attention. There's over 60 of them, and that's... I don't understand that. Um, this feels like a bad design to me. Like, what I, what I thought was... It feels like they sat down and the first thing they did was that they made the Tree of Wisdom. They, they put up all the different areas of study, they decided it was going to be nine steps, and then they had just realized, oh, we just made 80 odd nodes that we have to put on here. We have to come up with a large number of skills. And they still didn't come up with enough skills to actually fill it out. So um, that's a real problem right there. Uh, I, there's too many skills, too many overlapping crafting domains. Um, I don't, I really would have appreciated a better way to interact with the skills. I absolutely would have appreciated a better way to find out what is craftable with the skill. Like I wanted to be able to click on it and just have its crafting menu pop up. And I spent so much time wishing I could sort it better. Sort it by Skolevskopy. Sort it by Horomachistry. Sort it by on the tree, not on the tree. Um, yeah, I spent so much time fighting just the UI to try to get the information I was looking for in front of me. And like, while this does parallel a librarian's lot, so it does fit in a little bit with what I was talking about earlier, <laughs> I don't feel it was a very pleasant experience, especially since there was no solution. Like, I can't exactly just build a bookshelf and then put all my horomachistry skills on it, because next time I hit tab, it will go away. It doesn't work like that. So I feel like that area of the game 
is in most need of a drastic overhaul. Like, obviously at this point, they can't just get rid of 75% of the skills. I think that would be a great improvement, but they can't do it right now. They're locked in. Um, and because uh, the skill stacking is so awkward, they have to be in a, well, I find it so awkward and just completely unusual, that they have to be all laid out one after another in full card width in the skills bin. Um, that you got to do something about that. Uh, I don't even have a solution. One real easy thing, super easy, uh, absolute must, all language uh, slots must be vacuum slots. All languages should go on some different tab somewhere else that is never opened, essentially. The languages only clutter up the skills bin, and the skills bin is in drastic need of uncluttering. So that's an easy, easy way to do it. Um, and, and God, I cannot express how frustrating it is to be to to queue up like eight different memories to pop out, and then like one is a couple are rejected because you didn't put in the uh, language. And it's just, it's just, it feels so bad when that happens. Of course, and, and language is like one of the <laughs> most obvious things for this not to happen. What? I just forgot how to speak Phrygian because I didn't put this card in this slot? Like, come on. Help me out a little bit here, guys. Um, so that's that's probably my biggest gripe overall. The UI needs work. Um, the UI seems to be designed around overambitious game elements, is what I want to say. Like, if you would have to refine this game down, I would say pare down the Tree of Wisdoms, gut the number of skills out there, make crafting easier to reference by just clicking cards instead of having to drag it around to the right bench. Trying to find the right bench to make the right crafting, uh, to craft the right object, that's great. Um, hunting around to try to figure out how you can squeeze out just one or two more points of influence or, or, um, to craft this one item that you know you can do, but if you just find the right spot, um, that's good. I imagine it's going to drive a lot of people up the wall. It kind of drove me up the wall, but I also appreciate it once I figured it out. And it's one of those things that becomes easier and easier the more you play, so uh, no real complaints there. Um, so yeah, I think that's my only big problem with the game. Um... So yeah, I've babbled on for quite some time. I'm not sure I have anything more uh, to say that's of any use whatsoever. Uh, not going to play it again, not at least until there's a transformative expansion coming out, or I can obtain very cheap uh, brain surgery in order to get these memories out of my skull. What I'll probably be doing next is... Uh, going back to Jupiter Hell, I've been threatening to do a Pryanodon's run of Factorial for a very long time. Still might do that, still feeling the Factorial itch, but if I just wait for like an entire year, there should be a full Factorial expansion out, and that'll be nice too. Um, I, I can't imagine anyone would care to watch me play Factorial, <laughs> so that might not even be online. Oh, and the big thing that's going to be coming up is the um, Elden Ring expansion, which will eat like a solid three months of my life. No problem right there. And that won't be on YouTube at all. I play Elden Ring on a console, so that's just going to be absent. Um, so I have to figure out what to do with my time. I don't know. It's not a terrible problem to have. So anyway... Uh, any or all of you who followed me throughout this journey, thank you very much for all your time and comments. Uh, I will try to pick a new game soon, and we'll try to put up more videos. So, bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye.